everyone in Coaching Tank how grateful I am that you uh, chose to invest in knowing that we come fully prepared to present to you every single week on Tuesdays and um, that, you know, we as coaches, number one, as we are uh, practitioners just like you, I am knocking doors, I am in the field, I'm listing property, I'm selling property, uh, staying relevant as a coach in today's shifting and changing market. And I'm so glad that you're here. And I look forward to you sharing with others if you're receiving great value that they can still come on board for $96 for a year. That's nothing, right? Um, and really, we really just want to impart it to a large group of people and not make it so expensive, right? Because there's so many places that you can go and get training and coaching. Trust me, I know. Uh, we want to bring it to a level where we're at the surface, but that we're continuing going deeper and deeper into places where your business is going to just be vast, your knowledge. So um, that's what Coaching Tango 2 is about. Good morning, Tanya. Hi, good morning. Hi, I don't see your face, but good morning. I'll jump on right now <laughs> a little bit. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, I, I am excited about today. I can't even tell you um, I'm always excited to come and coach. I'm always excited to teach. I'm always excited to impart uh, wisdom and my expertise, experience, and brainstorm with all of you, even in a group coaching. Hi, Melissa. Good morning. Um, and today, we're going to talk about listings and marketing. And we did um, the listings at Rock Part 1 a couple weeks ago or last month and now I'm kind of taking you into part two and I have so much to share and I'm going to actually give you samples of listing presentations that are digital online for you to look at. Now mind you these are from companies that I've worked for in the past and that I have created. Um, others were created by the company as well so by in no means um, is it meant for you to just, it's for you to take the ideas. Those are their copywritten material, but I'm just sharing them with you so you can get an idea of what you should be doing, what you could be doing, and how you can enhance your listing presentation because that's key. Like at the end of the day, come on, um, you and I both would much rather, I showed property uh, with my husband on Saturday and oh my gosh, I mean, working with buyers, we love them, but their concept of what's going to work and what's not going to work, and it's never the perfect house and all of that stuff, right? So working with buyers has its challenges, but we love them and enjoy them. However, having the product, oh, that's awesome, right? And preparing the product and speaking to sellers, I knocked a hundred doors, one zero zero on a Monday, talked to 18 people, which isn't too bad of a percentage. We had knocked 38 doors prior to, and we got 13 people. So people are home, they're, they're at home. They're wanting to know what's going on with the market. They're appreciating what we're sharing. So once you get the opportunity to actually go into their home, you better have your listing presentation seller and then your marketing plan better be on point right it better be above and beyond and stand out so I'm going to share some examples with you and you know me already if you're getting to know me Melissa I don't know how much well you know me I'm so glad you're here um, but I am going to be sharing on screen some samples and then I'm going to get to the second part of the listing presentation uh, part two and talk about marketing so I'm actually going to get right to these slides and share with you. I'm going to open it up over here first, make sure I'm good to go. And I'll probably do it in this format just because I need to, to be able to see what it looks like. So give me a minute there. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Let me share my screen. Sharing. All right. So you all should be able to see slide number one. Now, when I taught this class, it had everything to do with putting the slides in order 
so that you knew what you were going to present digitally to your customer and that you knew what was coming next and so forth. Okay. So basically this is for you. This is for you as the seller's agent to re be reviewing what slide number one would be. And then we talked last week about what you would say. I'll show that to you after we're done. I just want to get straight to it so you can get some, some fun and some ideas. So um, now this particular company that I worked with and worked for they had an amazing listing presentation. Now, mind you, this belongs to them and you can't really copy it in any way, shape or form um, outright exactly, but I'm giving it to you as simply an example, okay? So that you can see what you should be doing. And when I go and show you the other one, I'm gonna show you how to create your own, okay? But marketing is key. And I'm gonna flip through these slides really, really quickly so that you can be getting an idea of what you should be doing, right? So I had shared with you that you should have maybe a letter from the president after you've introduced your first slide of who you are. Get some pictures, make it look nice and put your company logo on there saying, thank you for choosing to work with me. I work with Remax, Coal Banker, um, Real, um, you're powered by EXP, all that good stuff, right? That's your company, who you are. And then you're going to have a letter from the president that basically says something about, you know, thank you for working with Main Street Realtors. Thank you for working for Remax again, right? This is an example only. We talked about it last week. And talk about things about how you understand their market. I remember when I took a lot of bits and pieces from where I worked with, I mean, I've worked with so many different companies and we're all very similar in the information we need to give. We're just putting it in a digital presentation, okay? So we understand your market and we go into slides three and four talking about what your company is. You've been established, you know, maybe it's a 25 year old company, a 50 year old company, your family owned, when were you founded? How are you equipped with uh, innovative tools and technology to work on your behalf? Do you serve locally where? Do you serve in Washington, DC? Do you serve in Hawaii? Where do you serve? Okay, so you're using these simply as examples. Now, where have you sold? Now, this company had sold back in the past, and I believe now, um, I don't know, I believe they may have a brand new listing presentation. I haven't seen it digitally, but where has your company sold? If they sold more than 10,000 properties, 5,000 properties in the last one year, two years, or three years, you need to ask your company for some kind of slide. I know Remax has a slide. I know Coal Banker has a slide. Go find one. Where have you sold? Get some validation to that. Talk about how you move people forward, how your company is referred. So all these large companies have the statistics. You need to find where your statistics are and talk about how repeat clients come your way. So if you also get referrals, I know Jessica Larkey gets plenty of referrals and she's on here. She should also be talking. You should be also talking now about your repeat clients and your referrals in your own slides. And maybe in here also putting in some testimonials, okay? So I get you from listed to sold. I move you forward. And I'm telling you right here, you should include testimonials, okay? Get some testimonials in there. And if you've got pictures of your listings to sold, get them in here. Start showing your pictures. If you only have your company, then that's fine. Use your company, okay? Get some solds in there. If it's one, two, three, or four, or again, use your company to help you out. We guide you personally and we keep you involved. How do you do that? So Breakthrough Broker, you can go grab a roadmap from Breakthrough Broker. It's free through your title company um, where they give you like a um, advanced package, if you will. So you can get an advanced package through uh, the title companies. If not, Breakthrough Broker has some really great roadmaps. Remember, you, you can't really use this. You can take a picture of it, but it doesn't belong to you. You have to go create your own stuff, right? So talk about the roadmap, how you take people through the process, right? How you guide them through the process. Keeping them involved every step of the way. We prepare you to understand your participation at every stop. We keep you involved knowing what to expect next. We show you how it will get done and resolve matters along the way. What does your slide look like? Now, this is you speaking to them. So when I say that's your slide, 
you have your slide up you are showing it to them. Remember, for those of you that were with me on listing presentations at Rock Part One, I had said that I have this cool little digital um, screen. I put it on their desk, on the kitchen table. They are seeing from my computer that slide. And then my slide says what I'm supposed to say. Okay, that's being innovative. That's being able to present it. You're not doing picking up your laptop and turning in it, showing it to them. That's ghetto. Okay, get a little screen, go down, order one. You connect it to your, your computer and then you're just putting it on the tabletop. And now they're viewing a digital screen of your presentation. And then you're viewing like I see something different than you do. And I'm reading that and it's helping me. Okay, because you want to get through it. So I might be saying to you, well, Tanya, I just want to let you know that as a seller's agent, my job is to prepare you at every turn. There are stages and there are phases in the process. So I'm saying that, right? And this is what they're seeing. Does that make sense? So now remember, you need to go grab something like this. And these are found in like a breakthrough broker. You can also find this in Keeping Current Matters. So Keeping Current Matters, I'm not sure if it's only a California product, to be completely honest with you, but I have Keeping Current Matters. Um, there's all kinds of cool things through Pinterest and all of that that take you through these really cool icons to get you through the beginning of the process all the way to sold. Find yours and make it yours, okay? So that's what they see. This is what you would have said. So how does the process work? I'm going to lay the foundation um, and the expectation, because that's really crucial. I want you to understand that. And having a key points system for each step of this process, what you need to know is essential. At each point in this process, I'm keeping you involved, constant communication with what I'm doing. Um, I have a pre-marketing plan. I have a marketing plan. There is an escrow plan and there is a closing plan. Oh, there is? Yes, there is. And there should be. You need one, right? They need to know that you have a process and you're very clear on that, right? So that was what you were speaking on that slide. Slide number six, what is the process? So we're with you at every turn from decision to dollars, becoming your tour guide as your navigator on a journey, leading you step by step. You are in the driver's seat, but what, we take the wheel at every turn. So we guide you, we educate you, we inform you, we lead you, we support you, and we represent you from decision to dollars in your pocket. The listing presentation and moving into marketing so that you're not just praying that it sells starts with the fact that they trust that you have a plan. How do you get them from making a decision to knowing that they're going to make money? How are you guiding me and educating me? That's what you're telling them, okay? Now, here we go. Next one. You're hiring a whole team of experts. This is not do it yourself, right? That's, that's who you're hiring. So who is your team? Now you need to have a slide on your own that has a picture of your whole team. You can have a, a picture of everybody included in there, your escrow officer, your transaction coordinator, your handyman, your photographer, your gardener, your videographer, who's involved, your notary, home warranty, um, everyone, your buyer's agents, everybody on your team versus a solo agent. So you're not a solo agent, you guys. You have a team behind you, but unless you present that, nobody really knows that. They think it's just you. So you've got to tell them who's involved in helping you. All of your resources are going to help you get it done. Otherwise, you're really not showing them that you have a good team backing you, okay? Now, since it's not DIY, they're not just hiring you, right? We achieve more sharing with you who's involved in supporting the sale of your home. This is my broker. My broker has 50 years experience. They come from this background, that background. I have many businesses, companies. Talk about your broker. You should be proud of your broker, your company. Who's your sales manager? Your sales manager is a huge part of your success, especially those that really care to support you and make sure that they're there to back you up in every situation. So if you have a great sales manager, don't discount your sales manager, or your managing broker that's there to help you. Your marketing team, who's helping you with your social media? Who's your filmmaker? Who's your marketer that does some of those things for you? Escrow, service affiliates, lenders, and most importantly, of course, you. Who are you? Where's your bio? Talk to me a little bit more about you. 
Who else is involved in the sale of their home? Well, explain to them by asking, why is this important to know? Who else is involved? It's important for you to know why escrow is involved and who we're working for. Why do you need escrow? Why do you need the title rep? Why do you need these people that I'm giving to your filmmaker, social media marketer? Are these people compensated by the seller? So this is you talking to them, right? Are they compensated in what way? What about a stager? Anybody have a stager? So maybe you're going to split a cost with a stager. You might have a stager on your team. I put that in there. Okay. How can they benefit the sale? How can they impede the sale? Is there a way that they can hurt the sale or is it all benefit? Do they have the seller a choice of all the people that are involved in this sale? They do. If they want their own escrow company and they have a, a, a friend that's in escrow, then they should let you know. If they have somebody in title that's going to give them a discount, typically not because uh, titles don't give discounts, but just ask them if they have anybody that would be involved. I have my handyman. I have a gardener. I have a filmmaker that I'd like to do a drone for me. That's my brother-in-law or whatever it is. Okay. Who else is involved in the sale? How do they get paid? So we, we invest in you. I want you to compare and contrast the competition because we're investing in you. And they used a slide to show their marketing. What kind of marketing do you have? So you want to show that you have a website. You want to show that they have photography, aerial photos, Twilight video, Matterport, maybe three, 360 tours. What other outstaging? Remember, I told you I worked for Main Street Realtors and they had a tremendous marketing program that they did. I'm sure that many of your companies have this. And if you don't, then you need to work on yours, right? You need to work on what you're going to do. We invest in you. That's our commitment. Would you not agree that most real estate agents and companies are antiquated and don't invest in high-end marketing? Maybe a discount broker gives discounted marketing. So my marketing is even separate than my company. My company does X and then I elevate it this way. So um, Jessica does some really great marketing. I know because I've known her for a while. Tanya, what kind of marketing are you doing? Think about how you're elevating your marketing. Adela, how are you mar elevating your marketing? Atanas, Michelle in different than maybe what your company already does because that's what's going to set you apart it's your marketing plan is it your social media marketing and the way you do it it's the way you schedule things it's the way you do your videos like what are you doing that needs to be in a slide somewhere that needs to be in here okay because when it comes to marketing you we the company act like an advertising agency Quality is everything. We know now that, you know, I mean, gosh, when I started, you guys, um, things were not the way it was today. Things are so much easier and they're already automatically elevated with the, the different ways that we can get information out there. I mean, you can use Canva and it's so freaking awesome. Anybody using Canva? Because if you're not using Canva, thank you, Tanya. Like it's awesome. It rocks. It is so dang awesome. And Adela says, yes. So you can elevate yourself by learning how to use certain tools that make you look different. So your quality is everything, right? That's what they want to know. How are you going to get that information out there? They want to know that you have premium and premier photography. Introduce your photographer. I have now elevated my listing presentation. It has a picture of the filmmaker with a bio of who they are, has a degree, this is their portfolio, this is the way your pictures are gonna look, okay? So a slide with the pictures, the photographer, your filmmaker, and who they are, and how they're going to, everybody's house is their ego, right? It's their ego about how their house looks. It depends if you kind of have a, a listing where they don't really care. But most people, I mean, it's like, how are you gonna make my house look good? I want my house to look nice, right? I wanna get the most, um, bang for my buck. Compare and contrast poor images that won't represent your home properly. So you can do a slide that also has, this is how some of the properties look. This is how I'm going to make your house look. Remember, you're creating your own and I'm giving you the ideas. 
So you can say, this is the way others look. This is the way they said, this is the way main streets are going to look. This is the way Remax is going to look Coldwell, EXP, or just working with, you know, the Larky group. My photographer does this. This is the way we do things. Okay. We bring your home to life through images and filmmaking. We should. You should. Everything should now come to life in a whole new way. People love pictures and video. So if you are working with a photographer that can do twilight photography, then highlight twilight photography. If you're not working with anybody doing twilight photography, then forget it. Don't do it. But if there's another way that you're doing it, share what way you're making the photography get highlighted. And I know that drone photography should definitely be a slide that you're doing and saying that you're wanting to give highlight to a specific, specific area, especially if it warrants it, okay? So Twilight Magic is not new. None of this is new. It's been around for a long time, but you can do Twilight, okay? Your home tells a story and we, we let the experts do it. So how do we let them do it? Video. So now you have your videographer get some really good stats on videography, what that's doing, people want to watch. And maybe you're going to say here, here is a sample of a video. So throw up a sample video of photography you've already done, of a video that you've done, and allow them to see samples. It should be short. You should be able to show it. So Jessica, I haven't talked for you uh, with you for a long time. I'm wondering if your listing presentation now maybe has, um, because you've taken a lot of listings. Congrats on everything that you're doing. Um, you might want to have a slide now that's showing samples of the different videos that you've done. You know, 30, 40, 50 second blurbs of your video, and then they're just going to start to go, that's the example. I want to see how it's going to look, Adela. Like how? How does it look? So give them examples. I'm your realtor. I'm not the media department. <clears throat> so if, if you are the media, then okay, that's fine, but you shouldn't. That's why you have your filmmaker, your drone person, and your photographer. We have the key professionals with the experience to do it right. So that's what you're saying when you're bringing up these slides. You're saying, you know, your home tells a story. I want to do that through Twilight Magic and photography and X, Y, Z and one, two, three um, through a video because I'm your realtor. I'm not the media department. And I have key professionals with the experience to do it right. So we're going to showcase the community. We're going to showcase the lifestyle of living in, you know, Fairview Estates. I'm going to help the prospective buyer view their new surroundings and imagine their life here. Imagine their life there. Okay. So you do that with your aerial. Show samples of live aerial that you have taken. This is to give you an example of what you should put in your slide. And you should always keep them updated as much as possible. Keep throwing in new slides new different videos that you have so they can get an, an idea. You are winning them over already with your marketing plan of the very beginning steps. Nonetheless, after you put it up for sale, you have to have a full marketing plan, okay? Even more. So put technology to work in your favor. That's what we do. That's what we do. Uh, we do that with 3D and 2D plus floor plans, rendering the, the, uh, the latest Matterport technology. If you're not using Matterport, then don't talk about Matterport, okay? So you need to come up with if that's how you're going to do things. If you're not, then just don't use that slide, okay? Maybe give them some statistics about Matterport, show them that, that perspective can make the difference, helping the, the buyer see the imaging and positioning their things in place. Matterport's a little bit expensive, so not everybody's doing that anymore, uh, but if you are, throw that in there. You can do 2D floor plans. So the Matterport camera will help you with that. And a lot of people like that. They do that in their brochures. You might be talking about your brochure. Positioning your home where the buyers look. So where are you putting your buyers? Your company, where you work, needs to have a way that they're positioning how buyers are being looked at through IDX, through all the different uh, websites that they're doing. So we market your home online right? Every broker is doing that, right? Because that's where the shopping starts. So you're speaking this and then you're showing your slide. Where are you showing them? Where are they being highlighted online? So 
get a nice picture. There's plenty of things out there, but your company may have something. So that's what you do on that slide. Okay, that's all part of your marketing. We've got you covered. Where? This is where you're going to be featured in all these websites. In the state of California, when you put a listing on the MLS, for my California people, I'm going to test you. How many websites automatically are included by using the CRMLS? Maybe your own MLS. Anybody know? What websites does it automatically go to? And do you know how many? Like, forget what your company may do because they may enhance it. 35. Okay. So it's automatically going to go to approximately 35 different websites. So if you didn't have a large company and you're wondering, well, where do they go to all these places? And I don't have a list automatically going to go to these 35 places, which are really, really the mostly used realtor.com, yahoo.com, uh, yahoo homes. Um, it has the ask. Okay. So I'll give you a task. Ask your MLS to give you a list of those names so that you can include them on a list automatically. You should know where they're going. You shouldn't guess. You should know where your MLS is putting them. Okay. We get the word out. If they can't find you, we find them and meet them where they shop. That's what you're telling the seller. That's my job. I'm here to get the word out. So if they can't find you, I'm gonna, we're gonna find them and we're gonna meet them where they shop, right? That's the online syndication. Every company has where they syndicate with their large websites. Berkshire Hathaway, <clears throat> excuse me, Cola Banker, probably XP, right? Real, um, what other big companies are out there? Remax, I think I said that already. Notice that it says there's over 100 plus websites for exposure. Most of these that you see in the center, homes, Zillow.com, um, a lot of this is old, right? Find out where it's being shown. Yahoo Real Estate, it's on Redfin, it's on Craigslist. Okay, what does yours look like? If you have worldwide exposure through your company, you should talk about that because that increases demand. People are looking and still buying from um, other countries. That's your search engine optimization searching for global prospects in their own language. So if you have global syndication, I know a company I worked for, uh, First Team, tremendous company. All the companies I worked for were awesome, 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 awesome. I have nothing but great things to say about all the companies I worked for. And um, most of them have global syndication. So if yours does, throw it in there. Throw it in there. We're socially connected. We're trending. I'm trending where the highest percentage of time is spent. Are you trending on social media? And where are you trending? If you're not a big social media person, you have to take that out. But if your company is doing it, so Main Street would say, um, you know, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, you know, Remax would say very much the same thing. Cole Baker says the same thing. Put your company logo, come up with your social media exposure and create your digital presentation. Okay. Telling your story, right? Maybe show them how you focus or um, highlight things on the multiple listing service that you use where you work, okay? So give them examples of the right way to do things, the wrong way to do things. They would say, you know, number, number one, um, this is an expired listing. It didn't get sold. It had several price reductions. There's the arrow going down. It really only had one photo or three photos. Uh, poor marketing description. Uh, too many days on the market, uh, incomplete information. It didn't have a lot of information. So that's not really good. We don't want to do that, right? So this would be the better way. I like to say the better way instead of the right way. Um, that's just me. But here's the better way. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. We get it sold. Show them an example of an MLS where you've got it sold. Maybe show them an example now of how you get it sold certain percentage above list price. So Jessica, you've got some above list price. Um, I know you do because if you posted some, maybe you show an example of one of those, how you get them sold above list and how you did it. No price reductions, how many pictures you had, 
right? Video virtual tour, less days on the market, detailed description, and a complete searchable criteria. It's important that you put in as much information in the search area so that it is searchable because everything you put in there, dog run, if it's available to put in a dog run, somebody's looking for a dog run, then they're going to find it by searching dog run, right? Anything very specific and unique, then you want to put those words in there, decks, patios, granite, countertop, quartz, whatever. That's what complete searchable criteria means. Then comes in your strategic marketing proposal. This is where the rubber meets the road. Because what I wanted to share with you about this is how many of us really rely on just doing the typical, but if it doesn't sell in two weeks or four weeks, what's the plan after that? What am I going to do? How do I revive it if it's now kind of maybe on the rack in the spinning wheel of the 30 days plus? and it hasn't sold. The minute your property is listed and everybody's excited about it, it's in the window at the store. Let's just say example. So you've got that idea. Everybody's excited about it. That's the price. So for two weeks, everybody's looking at it. The minute it comes off the window, it's on the rack now. How do you get people excited about it again? You have to have a plan, right? You have to be a differentiator. And how you're going to use your marketing plan after two weeks and even four weeks to attract buyers. So, and then you start getting into examples of your flyers, the different things that you do if you're door knocking, if you're sending out just listed postcards, what are you doing to attract it maybe through, you know, paper, paper format or postcards. Do you have flyers? How are you using flyers? Because if you're not, don't say that you're going to do it. If you're going to send out postcards, tell people you're going to send out postcards. If you're not, then you don't have that. That's not part of what you do, right? If you're going to do an open house, is it a mega open house? Is it a regular open house? Is it weekly open houses? How are you going to use those open houses to attract buyers? I put up, so... Um, there's a slide that I'm actually creating because I'm recreating uh, my own listing presentation right now that says we do over 50 plus open house signs. And I've got pictures of all of the signs all over the place. So how many signs do you put up for your listing for your open house? That's, that's part of marketing, attracting buyers. 50 plus signs is a lot of signs. If you're knocking doors, you know, two days ahead of time, if you're sending out personal invites to the neighbors and you're having a neighbor preview, then that would be what you're putting here as a differentiator. If you're not, then you tell me what you're doing, right? Not all sellers want open houses. You, you're doing it to attract buyers. Um, of course, we're also doing it to get more sellers, right? Do you have single property websites? So that's an idea. Do you have a website that actually says, 123faketransactionstreet.com. And then they go there and now it's this beautiful website with all of these pictures and so forth, right? Um, I'm going to skip that slide because we're not doing that anymore. Okay. How are you advertising in and on social media? Are you doing Facebook ads? Are you running social media posts? Are you paying for those ads? Um, there is a way to do retargeting. It's just a little bit different now when we're doing geo-targeting and retargeting with Facebook, but that's just a, a different class. So how do you deliver your ads? How are you getting that out there, right? If you are now doing coming soon, in what way are you doing your pre-marketing for the first 21 days? In the state of California, we have the opportunity to do 20, to have 21 days of pre-marketing. So Tanya, Tell me, what does that look like? So you would say, my pre-marketing plan is a 21-day plan to get what? Excitement, to create anticipation, to get a list of buyers that are ready, that the minute we say it's ready for showing, I've got tons of people. This is what I do for my pre-marketing. So what is that? right? So your pre-marketing plan should be a coming soon slide that talks about what you do before then. That's your pre-marketing, 
okay? Not just praying that it's gonna happen, right? And then you wanna have some options that you offer. If you do, you can say you clean, I garden, I'll get your carpets clean, or these are things that I suggest that you do, etc. Does that make sense? Because you might offer those things as an extra added thing, right? Uh, now, I'm gonna stop the share for a second. All right, so anybody getting the idea here of what I'm talking about as far as digitally what's happening and what you should be doing? Any thoughts on what you're seeing here? Oh, good, and you needed some stuff to put, where to put new stuff? Yes, where to put new stuff, because now we need to add some testimonials, Jessica. We need to add some videos of your, yourself. You need to always be promoting you, right? Your company... Your company, you have a great company, you have a great company, but you're doing the work, right? So they have ways that support things, but now as you're getting things sold, you're getting property sold, you want to bring that to light. So show those testimonials, show how you do it. Um, actually, I'm going to share a little bit more along with me. MG, I have a question. Yes, please. Are you going to go over about what's the, um, the closing plan? Mm. that you had mentioned earlier yeah i don't know that i'll have time to get through all of it i, I will certainly try because i do have it ready awesome thank you you're welcome so i was also going to share this with you remember i'm giving you the ideas you need um if you're using uh ways for buyers on your sign to be able to look at more properties so if you have one listing and that listing is going to promote more listings for them to see other listings. You might have one of those text to code type of things or whatever. What kind of apps are you using and are you promoting those apps? So that's what I'm letting you know. Everybody's using apps today. Come on. Your own company has an app. You're either using HomeSnap. You're using, um, gosh, what's the name of the other one? OneTouch. Uh, through your MLS, there's, I was looking at some of the different names, but when we're in different states, I'm not always aware as to what apps you, you can use, okay? But, you know, there's one called HomeSpotter. Um, yeah, that's the only one that I can think of that might be in HomeSnap, that might be for all states. But what apps are you using that you're also offering on maybe a sign writer? So how is your sign writer? Maybe there is a slide that needs to include how your sign writer attracts buyers. Your job is to attract buyers, right? How are you doing that? I, I really don't, I want to know how you bring me buyers, Tanya, for my house. So when, if I'm going to allow you to put up a sign, that's great. People are going to drive by basically the neighbors. How does that sign scream out to everybody to bring more people? How does it do that? So if you're getting the house in front of them, there should be maybe a text to code. There should maybe be a, um, a QR code or something. Tell them how that works and how you attract buyers, okay? And if you're using an, an app, then that way that app actually, if you have more listings, will send all the listings that you have to any buyer that looks up anything on your listing, okay? So apps should really be a work. Um, you're going to talk to them about how you keep them updated, right? Your weekly updates, um, where you're getting, how many views they have on Instagram, on Facebook. If you're using TikTok, you should have a TikTok view, your realtor link views, keeping them updated as to what's going on. That's all part of marketing is showing them where people are looking because if not, you can't really prove it, right? Um, this is about showing time if you're using showing time. That's part of your listing presentation. Benefits of staging. So if you're going to use a stager, uh, Jessica, if you're already staging or if you've even staged a property once, you show your before and you show your after, and then you need to talk about feedback and how it actually gave you more money, how it increased the value of your property. Okay, so you want to start giving examples of staging, especially if you stage it yourself. Like I'm now staging my own properties. So I have all my staging stuff. So my garage nice and organized, looks really good, but I got all my staging stuff. So now I can go and stage. Um, how is that enhancing? And if that's something that you offer, okay? 
So talk about the different percentages, how staging works, or you can help them. You are going to, anybody take any staging classes? So I went to interior design school, so that helps me. Um, but if you've gone to some classes and you got certified, let them know, I do know how to stage properties. So that elevates your marketing. How do I elevate myself, MJ? I don't get what you mean. I'm certified in staging. How? I went to classes to learn how to do this, to make sure that I'm doing things correctly. Anybody can just use common sense, but you want to show them how you elevate yourself, right? And how staging works. Um, there's virtual staging. So anybody use like Box Brownie? Um, plenty of different virtual staging companies. You do need to pay for this. So this is an option. This is something you may offer and you may pay for. So currently right now, um, I'm in the process of working with a virtual stager that we need to get for a empty million dollar property that needs to be able to show what, show what it would look like because it's empty and he doesn't want any furniture in there on this brand new floor. Just doesn't want anything in there. So bummer. The only way I can help enhance this house is to do virtual staging and some houses need that. So are you offering that? Anybody doing virtual staging? Done it before at all? Anyone? Tanya's shaking her head no. Adela, virtual staging. Atanas, Jessica, have you done it? Melissa, have you done virtual staging? No. No? So what do you think? Oh, Melissa says she has. Any good, any good feedback? Any good um, any feedback you want to share? She's on Facebook. I like virtual staging. I think it works really well because you're giving somebody an idea of what it could look like. I have, we have a dog listing right now that we're gonna take and then we have another really beautiful, yeah, that Fox Brownie works really, really great. So you know what? You can even virtually stage properties that are ugly, right? And they have ugly stuff, they'll go in there and they'll, they'll take care of it. So virtually renovate what you've got going on. Okay. It's, a, it's important. These things are really important to show how you're different. Okay. Virtual landscaping. You've got a dog yard, ugly or plain or no grass, or you want them to be able to see what could be done, then you could do virtual landscaping as well. Okay. So maybe the home only needs virtual landscaping and the house looks great, but you've got a 1.5 acre property and people don't, can't figure out what to do there because that's not their mindset, then help them out, help them to showcase the property. All right. Help them to do that. Okay. So I hope I gave you some ideas. Remember, this is all, this is, belongs to them. It's only for you to use the, use it as an idea. Um, let me stop that there. Okay. Now, when I got into, um, the second part of listing presentations that rock, we were talking about, um, what to say, how to say it, and what are all the marketing things that you should be doing. Now I have all this material. I know you guys can't maybe see this because it's white. You probably can't see it. Okay. I have 56 point marketing plans in front of me. I have a 42 point marketing plan in front of me. What is your plan? Okay, and I know that you're gonna say to me, can I have that? Okay, listen, I don't mind sharing anything and everything with all of you, but here's my point. If you currently don't know what to do after three weeks go by, and you already have your idea of what you do, okay? You already have your list, your checklist. I gave you pretty much a checklist, right? Um, you know, if you, I'm, re, I'm gonna read to you some of these things. So let's say, for example, you start out with, I'm gonna stage the property. I'm gonna put this for sale sign up. I'm gonna do a grand opening mega house, mega open house. Uh, I'm gonna do my 21 day pre-listing coming soon that I do on social media and marketing and videos. Um, I've got my drone. Um, I'm gonna send out just listed postcards. You get it, right? Okay, so now it's been on the market for three weeks. What do you do now when it's not moving? Do we wait? 
for the buyer's agents that are out there to sell it. Honestly, that's what most people do. We wait. We wait for the market to do the work. We wait for the MLS. Maybe a price reduction moves it along. But then again, now we're going on the fourth week and I've had two offers and they didn't go through because they were too low. Now I'm on my fourth week and it hasn't sold. What are you doing? You guys just want me to give you that answer. <laughs> I sometimes, um, what I do sometimes, well, not sometimes, what I do is after even open houses, I'll go through my sign-in sheets and I'll reach out and like call back the people who came to my open house and like uh -huh. even just to get feedback from them. Um, sometimes, you know, they were looking at multiple properties and they were comparing and then just letting them know, like, you know, this one is still on the market and, and I just try to share information or see, you know, pick their brains. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's, it's called follow-up, right? Atonis, it's called follow-up and we have to continue to follow up in our MLS. Um, for those of us that have this, so I'm not sure in, in where you live, Atonis, you have this, but we have what we call reverse prospecting. Anybody use reverse prospecting or do you have it in your MLS? Are you aware of it? Jessica Larkey, are you using reverse prospecting? Because maybe you don't have to all the time because they sell so quickly, but I know that not all listings are going to sell quickly. So the seller is expecting you to tell them what, what you're going to be doing. So I have a listing that will be closing at the end of May. And I appreciate my sellers. Um, you know, they're very kind, right? They're very kind to me and, and, and all that stuff. But they're telling me, you keep us informed so much. It's so refreshing that you're constantly telling me what's going on during the transaction, but you always told us what you were doing during the listing to bring a new buyer. You told me that you were working on your reverse prospecting and reaching out to agents that have favorited that house and you're calling them and you're sending them information and you're getting, so reverse prospecting is super important. Now, do you all have your own, and I'm glad you're using it, Jessica, or do you all have your own list of the agents in the area? that you're working. So let's say, for example, you're working outside of an area that's not normally where you, know, you live and work, okay? You're going to need to get a list of the agents that are selling. You're gonna have to pull it, on the, uh, pull it up on the MLS and see who's been selling two plus properties in the last three months in that area. And you're gonna call that buyer's agent and you're gonna go, hey, I have a listing. Now, you can also use these really cool email programs that are out there where you send your listing. Um, you can use uh, List Flash. You guys heard of uh, List Flash? There's something called List Flash, and they're programs that you buy into, but I'd rather have my own list, which I have and I'm creating. And I've, I've got tons of, tons of realtors that I work with. Get the information to them. Your job is to get in front of them because I was going to bring up to you that if you've ever looked at expired listings, anybody go after expireds? Anybody? Expired is your, um, yes, okay. So the expired seller is a disgruntled seller that's not happy with their agent. Why? Because they didn't get it sold. And because they had no marketing plan or perhaps they were just a bad seller and wasn't listening to reason regarding the price. So we know it's either pricing or marketing or condition. I understand that. But they are asking for somebody to come and tell them that you have a way to get this sold, that you have a plan. What is your plan? You're not just going to put up a sign and pray that it sells, are you? Because that's what the other agent did. Do you have, oh no, I have a network of agents that I will be reaching out to that consistently sell in the area. They will be getting a an email from me. They will be getting a complete brochure from me, a digital brochure. Anybody do a digital brochure? No? Yes? So digital brochures created on Canva. It's easy. Create a digital brochure on Canva so that they just open it up and they can click and now they have it. So Tanya, wouldn't you prefer somebody sending to you 
something in your email or by text that's saying, hey, I'm promoting a listing that I have. It's in the price range of, you know, between 550 and uh, 600. If you have a buyer, I thought I would just give you a sneak peek, right? Um, and maybe you have your preferred peeps that you have, okay? So um, this is kind of just coming to me. I think maybe it's just a good brainstorm. But having your own preferred peeps that you send them and, and saying, hey, if you send me a listing, I've got a $500 bonus to you. Why not? You're one of my peeps. You're always out there. You're in my community. Like Jessica Larky, if I send that to you, because she's one of my peeps. Adela, you're one of my peeps. Tanya, I think you live near me. I can say, hey, I've got this listing. If you know anybody, um, I, I'd be giving, willing to give you a $500 um, a bonus just because you're part of my group. Okay, so as long as you disclose where money is going, you can do that because everything has to be disclosed. Okay, because I think Atanas was asking me that question. Is that something we can do before listing the home? Um, you can present it to an agent before without showing in the state of California. I was just saying like offering a bonus to your peeps that you might have in your group. If I answered your question. Yeah, I was thinking more of like the when you said the reverse prospecting, because I know I have spoken about it with another agent before, like reaching out to like my network of agents um, before even listing the home and sending those emails and letting them know that I have this property. First tapping into my my buyers. If I don't have buyers, then tapping into the, the network of agents is that something that most definitely that's the whole point is tapping into their their people because they're going to favorite some of those listings and then that would be what we call over here reverse prospecting okay yeah and, and having your own um pool and network of people i mean some of you who work for exp or remax or the, you know these large companies with a network our job is to be looking at these properties to get it out there so i don't get mad if somebody sends me um a listing they're doing their job i have this one gal um she's always sending me properties and it's in palos verdes which i don't have buyers in palos verdes and i say thank you so much if i ever have a listing in palos verdes now i know you're the agent you're also networking with people so they'll know if you have somebody in this area i'm your person that's how i network so you need to tell them how you network right um going back to expires what i was sharing was your marketing plan after four weeks, if you don't have this plan, <laughs> that's what an expired gets upset about. It expired because it didn't sell. It didn't sell within how many months was it on the market for 90 days? Was it on the market for four months, six months? And they're upset. So unless you have your way of being different, putting it on the MLS, anyone can put it on the multiple listing service and change the price, right? Right. But as we continue to go through, this is my plan. So when we don't get the buyers that are just going to see it through the MLS, new dress in the window, we've dressed it up with new pictures, we've dressed it up with drone, we've dressed it up with all the things that I've done. If it doesn't get sold within the two weeks, I have a plan, okay? And expired people get really upset when you don't have one. So how are you going to use technology? So you should be writing this down. How do I use technology when it doesn't sell anymore? My technology. Is it my social media technology? Is it my videos? Is it my company that's doing something different? So what I'm trying to say to you is you can't give away the whole bag of potato chips in the beginning. You're going to have to leave them one potato chip at a time because if you give them the whole bag, there's nothing left. You're going to have to hold back some of these things. Does that make sense? So maybe you don't give away virtual staging right away. Maybe you don't say you're going to do all these things right away unless you feel that you have to. Hold back and say, you know what? I think we're at a place. Um, case in point, one of my listings right now where we said, you know what? I think we're at a place where we haven't sold. We're going on five weeks and we're going to need to do virtual staging. We've done all the things that we said we were going to do. Now we're going to do virtual staging. If I give it all the way up front, 
Does that make sense? I'm not going to do it all, all together, all up front. I've got to save a few things to be able to do a little bit later. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you're just giving away the whole bag. Okay. Um, I need to share something else with you guys really quick. Let me get out of where I'm at. No. Where is my sharing button? No, I can't seem to find it. Share and share alike. Okay, sharing, where are you? Am I sharing? I'm not sharing. Oh, I know why. Okay. Okay. This goes by so fast for me. So marketing takes a lot of effort and it takes the structured plan, right? So I gave you some slides to give you an idea of a digital presentation, okay? Um, and when we were talking last week and doing, you know, what you say, because what you say really matters. We were talking about different questions that you need to ask. And I just need to transition here really quick before I show you a bunch of other slides to give you ideas. My, my job is to help bring that oxygen boost to you to get your own wheels turning because this is your business. So you're going to be able to do all kinds of amazing things the way you want, right? So this is the second part of this presentation. When we're talking to them at the listing presentation, we're asking them questions. We're saying to them, you have questions, let me give you some answers. And we're gonna to talk to them and ask them, how much do you think your home's gonna sell for? You're gonna present the CMA. How long do you think it's gonna sell? take to sell? You're gonna talk about the five areas of alignment, which I'll skip into really quickly. You're gonna to talk to them about how you market and advertise their home and how I'm different than anyone else, right? And that's where all those slides came in. How we market and advertise your home, and then you show those next slides. How am I different than anyone else? You're gonna explain that through the slides that you show them, okay? So I gave you up front an idea of what it looks like, and now I'm going back to the nitty gritty of you learning what to say my marketing proposal. I'm here to help solve and bring solutions to five key areas, okay? So you talk about what your proposal is to them. There's multiple steps within the proposal step. Each individual step serves the purpose of getting the seller to understand their challenges. That's your proposal. Right now, I wanna ask you, and we're gonna talk about getting your home in alignment. So these are the five key areas. Right now, after we're done and you agree that I am the person that you know can market your property and get it sold for top dollar, is that um, we're looking at the condition of the property, how accessible it's gonna be to the prospective buyers. We're gonna talk about marketing, pricing, and the compensation that we're gonna offer to buyer's agents. And we talk about the alignment has four different conditions, four Cs. And one of them is called clutter color, cleanliness, and curb appeal. Those are the four C's. We wanna help get personal items out of sight. We wanna get neutral colors. That's the best choice to get everybody to see that they can have the home and it's neutral. They won't have to do too much of changing that red and changing that blue in the little kid's room and pink in the other little girl's room. The cleanliness of a home, we wanna really help you think that this is, a, or think buyers think that this is a model home. We've got to omit any odors in the home. So if you're a smoker, um, if you have pets, we're going to start working on that. Professional cleaning, that would be your initial investment unless you're going to offer it. So this is how you talk to your seller. Curb appeal. So first impressions outside is going to lead the buyer to want to open the door. Now I can share with you when I walked up to your door to come into your home today, 
Um, everything looks really lovely. I would probably make a few suggestions once we agree together, or you can say to them, the curb appeal on your home will really need to be worked on to try to get people to really want to come in through the door. And we can talk about that later once we decide to work together. I don't start giving people a bunch of advice if they're not going to commit to me. They, they, they need to get an alignment with you. Okay. Then you talk about the, uh, the second part of the alignment is their accessibility and making sure that access is available. How is it gonna be shown? Is it by appointment only? Where's the lockbox gonna be? You talk about these things, right? These are the main points to the seller about how critical it is for attracting both to the agents that need to preview and to the buyers that are gonna come see their home. When it comes to marketing, we act like an advertising agency. So remember I had that on the slide? Here I'm showing you what to say. You're hiring more than a realtor, you're hiring an advertising agency. Alignment number three, marketing. So you're gonna explain, I worked for a great company, Remax Top Producers, and I wrote this program for them. That was not something that they had, something that I wrote. And I helped them align some of these things with their company, okay? So you need to have your own marketing system. Provide that information on what your marketing system is. And you're gonna talk about the different things that you do to get um, your advertising dollars and how you're using it to get buyers into the marketplace. What's your system to capture buyers? So I'm gonna ask you this. This is a very deep class, you guys. This is something I can always feel like I can just give you and it's just all gonna click, right? What is your buyer delivery system? And what is your seller delivery system? So you should be asking me this question, MJ, what the heck is a buyer delivery system? Yeah, because it's how you're using your marketing dollars, your company dollar, you, Tanya, Jessica, Adela, Melissa, Atanas, anyone else who's watching later on, okay? How do you capture buyers with the money that you incorporate back into your marketing plan? That's your buyer delivery system. When a broker uses their dollars to attract or appease more sellers, that's their delivery system for a seller to get sellers. So how are you spending money to get buyers to come to their house? That's a buyer delivery system, okay? So you're an advertising agency. You wanna make sure that no stone is unturned when you're bringing buyers into the marketplace. You are the one that's bringing in the demand, okay? You want to help answer the question, marketing, how am I different than anyone else? Putting up a sign and praying and putting in the MLS cannot be the only way. So you've got to point out the differences between your own seller sold properties and those of other agents who drop the ball. How long are your properties on the market versus those that stay on the market longer? Your photos, your descriptions, and everything that I showed you as an example that make you different. Because if I were to align all of you, including myself and anyone else who's watching, we align ourselves all up together. Are we the same? In many aspects, we really are. That's, that's really a tough nut to swallow, okay? So in many aspects, we really are the same unless you elevate yourself in how different you are. So what are you doing? What is your buyer delivery system? Where do other people drop the ball? How are you getting buyers to them? That is your alignment. Remember what I showed you when I said we invest in you? This is now what to say. We invest in you. That's our commitment. Would you not agree that most real estate agents and companies are antiquated and don't invest in high-end marketing? And then, for example, I had a remap slide. So I created all of the training. I just put in the information for each company. That's what you need to do. You need to say, okay, my company examples go here. Does that make sense? So when I created this, I just simply took it and put it there. I've done this for other companies already as well. And I'd say, you need to tell me, how do you advertise and attract your buyer? Your company examples go here. Okay, so Tanya, do you work for EXP? You need to put in your EXP info here. How does EXP attract buyers? If EXP is not doing a really great phenomenal way and you don't have anything, then it needs to be Tanya Garcia. 
okay? It's how you are doing it. It's through your websites, it's through your ads, it's through so forth. But showing a picture really helps people understand, okay? When it comes to marketing, quality is everything. And now what are you doing? Now all I'm doing, you guys, is showing you another sample. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving you another idea. I gave you one digital, completely done for ideas. And now I'm showing you another one. Professional photography, professional video, aerial photos, video, twilight, 3D photography. Okay? Four images will not represent your home. You show a sample of a really ugly picture. You show a sample of your photography. We bring your home to life through images and filmmaking. Have an example of your video. That should be what goes right there. And you should have more than one. And you should also have testimonials of your peeps. You should have little pictures of your TikToks and your Instagrams or whatever of people doing this and a blurb of your testimonials of what, how did the buyer, oh, sorry, let me bring that up. How did the buyer actually find that property? So Jessica, go back and ask all of the buyers that you've worked with, sellers, excuse me, how did the buyers find that property? Ask your clients. How are the buyers finding it? Get an idea. Oh, they found it through this site. Get, get those ideas of knowing. Uh, make sure that that's really clear because if it was through your website, if it was through your mobile app, whatever, show and prove how you bring buyers. That's my point. Your home tells a story. Let the expert do it. I'm your realtor, not the media department. And now I have a new slide for you. So see, I am showing them and giving you guys ideas of what needs to be in some kind of a digital presentation. I'm not the media. I have the key professionals with the experience to do it right. Okay. So this is all about YouTube. This is all about how YouTube is really bringing people, how Facebook and YouTube, all of these statistics. We showcase the community and lifestyle, aerial photos. Same information, showing you again, we put technology to work for you. Are you doing that? Tell them. Perspective can make the difference. 2D floor plans. Positioning your home where the buyers look, get the word out. Okay, so when I worked for Remax, I had to go find how. Is Colo Banker is going to have a different slide? Century 21 is going to have a different slide. Keller Williams is going to have a different slide. EXP is going to have a different slide. Real is going to have a different slide. Berkshire Hathaway is going to have a different slide. And your own smaller brokerage firm may have a different slide. Okay. How do you get the word out? If their website is doing a great job, you should say so. Your online exposure syndication should say so. Okay. Worldwide exposure should say so. Where, how does your company get out the word worldwide? Are you global, right? Virtual open houses, we were doing them coming soon. Oh, oh okay, yeah, that's where I'm stopping. Okay, so was this helpful? <laughs> marketing, still talking about marketing. So here's my question. Now that I gave you all of that and what we're doing, what are going to be some ideas that you're going to do after? And I know that Atanas was saying your closing plan. So let me, let me stop the share really quick. Is everybody good with what I had there? Yeah, I'll stop that. What are you going to do after four weeks? It's not, it's not selling. MJ, I don't know what to do. My listing is not selling. It's four weeks, it's five weeks, it's six weeks, and it's not selling. So you need to have a 30-day plan from 30 to 45 days, from 45 to 60 days, from 60 to 75 days, from 75 to 90 days. Are you going back and kind of restarting again some of the things that you did? You might be, but you need to be letting them know if the property doesn't sell within 30 days, we will be doing this plan. So reverse prospecting is one. I'll be going back to reverse prospecting. I will be knocking doors in a specific area. 
I will be doing a mail out to a specific area, specific, specific niche. I will be sending a list flash or whatever that email program is to a network of agents. What else are you going to be doing? If you've already sent out postcards, you're going to send out another postcard, are you? What else are you guys going to do? I'm upset. I'm, an, I'm a very upset seller and it's 45 days. You told me you had this amazing plan. Your amazing plan was great. I loved it. I loved it. It was great. You brought me a lot of buyers. I have no offers. So we have a, you know, four month listing. We have a three month listing. What are you going to do now? Sharing the, sharing the marketing options. I'm got to read it. I can't see it. Sharing the marketing options I did not share with them the first time that we met, okay? So yes, you can save some of them and say that you're not gonna give away the whole thing, but I'm asking you guys to, to brainstorm in your mind right now so that you don't just let me give you, the, give you the answers. You guys are all seller's agents. So yes, go back and discuss the price and review this four C's, love it. Is the condition of the property needing some changing? Do we need to be bringing in some staging? You know what? It hasn't been accessible. You haven't been allowing it. The odors, the dogs, the smoke, um, whatever it is, discussing those areas of alignment and getting out the declutter. We really need to declutter. I can give you an idea of the listing that we have. It's 1.325. And I really need him to declutter more the garage because people want to see this six car garage with a major gorgeous epoxy floors and everything and it's covered and he's been doing it over and over and over and it's really been helping but let me still move your noodle some more before we kind of let go here and then give you some ideas but i'm upset with you it's five weeks people are upset if it doesn't sell in two weeks you guys nonetheless we get into five weeks right it hasn't sold in two weeks. You did all this amazing stuff. I trusted you, um, but it's five weeks now. So what are you going to do? I need, you guys, I need you guys to give me an answer. So I love that you guys are thinking about this and brainstorming, but what else are you going to do to attract buyers? You are the marketing agency. It's not working. I need more buyers. What are you going to do? Open houses aren't working. I chose you out of an expired um, because you said that you got property sold. So what are you going to do? I'm, I'm reading something right now that's just an expired. Okay, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> MJ, give us the answer. It is, is there a right or a wrong answer? Is there? Do you need to piggyback and start over again with what you were doing? If that wasn't working, is it always price? So you reduce the price. So how do you get it out there again, right? It's not always price, thank you. It really isn't. We're in a market that shifted in many places, okay? I live in the state of California. It is tough to buy a house in California. I don't know how it is in other places. All I know is my area and I know it very well. Interest rates are interest rates, they're high. Properties are still selling and houses are still listing. I know because I'm doing it and so are you and you should be. But. I want more listings. I want to work with less buyers. I want to have the product. So I want to have the seller marketing presentation that tells them properties won't always sell within the first two weeks. If I go to a seller right now and tell them it's taking on average 48 days to sell, which it did for my listing in Hesperia, right? Seller concessions. Excellent. Thank you, Adela. So do you want to share with everybody what's on your mind about seller concessions? This is, a, this is a, a place for some good group coaching right now. If you can talk. I don't know if you're in a bad area. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, usually I will discuss, you know, um, paying closing costs, buying down their um, 
current interest rate since they're so high. So those are usually things I will save for a little later if it, we don't see something coming up. I mention it lightly, but don't. that's kind of like my little pocket tool later. Um, but I do do that. And then I also just, if they come in low with commissions uh, for the buying agent or, you know, completely, I always say, we're going to look at that again, because that could be a, a factor. Oh. Agents aren't showing it because of this or that or no. And it's really true. I mean, I'm just very blunt with them. Like, okay, if a agent has a client and these three are paying 3% and you're only paying one and a half or two, they're going to really look at the other ones first yep and yours is going to kind of go to the wayside so that's something i'll, I'll agree to the lower um, commission up front but then i say but we we're, we will review this if we don't see any um activity yep i love and I, it and i always say you know the market speaks to us in different ways and this is one of them most definitely you you just you hit the nail on the head adela and that's experience talking because it's the whole point was we don't give away the whole bag of potato chips. You have to keep some of your strategies in, in, in perspective. So don't give it all away. Say so, you now if the property doesn't get sold within a certain period of time, my, the next strategy would be X. And if we don't get it sold by then, the next strategy is X. Now, if we get into past 45 days, this is the strategy. So you can let them know ahead of time that you're not going to do it all at once, but that would be what we would possibly need to do. So right around the 35 day mark, if we don't have an offer, this is going to be part of the marketing plan. That marketing plan is we're going to offer um, a $500 bonus to the buyer's agent. And at that point, maybe give a quarter point back to the buyer for closing costs. Are you comfortable with that? And if we go into 45 days, and at that point, we don't have an offer, then we can offer a $500 or $750 bonus to the agent, or we increase the commission by a percentage or by a quarter point, and we're going to offer to give the buyer uh, $2,500 in closing costs. So, so you're letting them know that it's incrementally different ideas that you can do with concessions. We're going to go ahead and offer them... Um, to clean, have the house professionally cleaned and the carpets cleaned before they move in. We're gonna be start offering these things and you can put this in these private remarks or you can put them in you know, the MLS, right? In your private remarks, but how are you getting it to attract buyers through the agents? So how are you telling the agents? Well, I start with my networking group. I'm gonna go on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. Now I'm giving you the idea already. How many Facebook groups are you in that are real estate related that you are allowed to share your listings with? One, two, three, five, 10. How many where you're pitching your listings? So somebody give me a number. Tanya, how many Facebook groups? Five. You're in five Facebook groups that you can promote your listings? Awesome. Adela, how many? Atanas, how many? Jessica, how many? 10 or more, awesome, okay? So now you tell them, oh, you know what I'm doing now? Do you see my point? You pull that ace out of your sleeve. I'm your ace under your sleeve, that's me, okay? That's what ace it with MJ is. I'm the ace in your sleeve. You pull that out and you go, oh no, by the way, um, I have these Facebook groups and um, I'm now going to be sending out a video. Let me send it to you that talks about etc. right? Uh, a lot of them are cutting back how? Let me see. Oh, some that were not approved. I see. I get it. Yeah, some may not be approved. Well, get in the ones that are approved, I guess, and make sure you get that information out there. Or I think that's why it's really important to have your network of your peeps and start grabbing those agents and being able to send them Cloud HQ video emails right in your email so that it comes out. But my point is this. And we're already out of time and it goes by so fast. Um, please don't give away everything. Keep some of these things that I showed you as your different strategies and tactics to pull out when necessary and use different concessions, use different things that you offer for buyers, for buyers, agents, different ways that you're going to get out there in your technology. Don't do it all at once. 
save a few of those things that you would do. So that's what I'm going to do after the fact if it doesn't sell. When you go to a retail, um, I know I've shared this with you guys before, but we had a big building materials company. So I know a lot about retail and owning a store. When you want something sold that people can't find back on aisle 25, where do you put it? You bring it to the front and you put it on an end cap. The end cap is where people are paying. So I see it and it's right there. That's my point. You got to bring it back to the eyes of everybody. Now, it's not always on clearance. So yes, price reductions are going to do it. So if you're going to do that, I put you back on the window because we're on clearance rack. I had to reduce the price. You might have to start all over again and do those tactics once again. Okay. Otherwise, you simply bring your product again to the forefront and in what way are you going to angle it in what way are you going to boost it are you elevating it putting it on a box did you put lights on it is it does it have video does it have sound do you see my point what are you doing so now i'm doing a video now i'm sending it and putting it on on, on a different uh facebook group now i'm getting it out on the cloud hq um, email and it's going out to certain people if it's a very unique niche property it needs to get maybe to certain kinds of professionals. Um, and I'll give you an example. The listing that we had in Hesperia, um, there is a Kaiser Permanente Hospital right next to there. They are, I learned from the seller, but um, it was already all over the place that they are expanding that whole place. They're doing construction and they have all these jobs. So what am I doing? going into Kaiser, getting the information to the human resources department to let them know that we have a house for sale. And, and can I put some flyers out and can I give them information? And she was like, of course you can. We have so many people in need of housing. So you have to find different ways that you're getting the attraction to buyers. So if it's a niche buyer, you're going to maybe have to do specific different things. Okay. You have to think outside of the box. You're a marketing agency. You can't just rely on the MLS and a prayer and a sign, right? So hold some of these things under your sleeve. Don't give away virtual staging all at once. Don't give away all these things all at once that we talked about. Hold them up and do it in increments so that they can see that you're going to do it at the 30 point mark, the 45 day mark, at the 60 mark. Even if you have to start over again, maybe you didn't knock doors. Now you're going to knock doors. Maybe you didn't do a just listed postcard and now you have to do a postcard. So you save it for later. Does this make sense, you guys? I know it's a lot to take in, but you just need your plan and they just need to know what it is. So when I'm looking at this 42 point plan and this 56 point plan that I have here, we save things for later. And you need to share with them what your plan is if it doesn't sell in 30 days, if it doesn't sell in 45 days. And there's not a huge, it's like, these are the two things that I'm going to do. We discuss pricing if needed, or we will adjust if necessary. Otherwise, I will be doing this, running an ad on Facebook. Then I will be doing virtual staging. Then I will be knocking doors. Do you see my point? That's what we'll do at that point. Other than that, if we price it right, do it correctly, this is what's going to get it sold. You're not hiring me just for my marketing. You're also hiring me for my negotiation skills, right? Okay. So I think you guys were hoping that I was just going to give you all these wonderful ideas and answers, right, Tanya? <laughs> Tanya's like, just can I just have a list? So you do need a door knock and you do need to do your Facebook ads and you do need to find out uh, where those things are on TikTok and use your technology, right? Love you, Jessica. I know you got to run. She's got kiddos. Um, but yeah, I want to just give you a list, but I need you to decide what your buyer delivery system is, right? What is it? What is it? And that's part of group coaching. And I might do another one where I give you a little bit more, but we run out of time. Um, in either case, yes. Please tell me that today you will have your 30 to 45 base under your sleeve ideas. This is what I'll do between 30 and 45 days. If it doesn't sell after 45 days, between 45 and 60 days, I do this. And it needs to be only maybe one or two things, or you simply revisit what you did and you do it at a higher level. That's all. 
If you did a just listed postcard and you did it to only 250, now you're going to go outside the area and you're going to do another 250, but you're going to another area where you're trying to get people that rent more to buy a single story. Or if it's a single story, you're going to deliver to the 55 plus and you're going to find out where all the 55 pluses are and, and single stories where people might want to buy this particular house. You see my point? Your job is to go find buyers. And you're always needing to find different ways to do it. So make your plan, put it together, and then come back and share some of the ideas that you came up with. All right? All good? Yes, thank you. This was really good. Good. I'm glad, Tanya. Any, any thoughts that you want to share on a new idea you got? Um, well, I need to get on my plan. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I've just, I feel like I've just done the minimum on my listings and, but it, it, it's just, it was easy to, you know, be a listing agent. So yeah, I, I haven't had to do all of this. Most of them sell within a weekend. So it's nice when they sell that fast. It, it's really nice, but they won't always. Absolutely. So, so now, now I feel more prepared for that. But Good, 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 good. I mean, obviously you can go back and take pictures of these things and, and get the idea, but Adela, start working on your presentation. Like, what does it look like when you're presenting? The, you saw there's a lot of slides here. You take out and put in what you want, but what does yours look like? I mean, you guys were creating these things on Canva. This isn't rocket science. It just needs to be your system. These are the things that I do. These are the five things that I do and they always work. Now, when those don't work, I don't want you to think that I don't have continued marketing proposals and plans for when it doesn't sell because your property is unique. I have a listing coming up. It is so unique. It's ridiculous. And I have to think outside of the box on how I'm going to find the buyer because the buyer is somebody who's only going to see the value in the land. The house mm, oh Lord, I don't know, right? But the land's amazing. So who's my buyer? And ask yourself that as I close up right now, when you're working with your seller, tell them that you understand and that you recognize who the buyer is for this house. I believe, um, oh, it's in Riverside. I believe that the buyer for this home is speaking to a household with children because of the 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 pool because it's a household that loves entertainment this home is speaking to a household of people that have bad knees and um, don't want to go up and down stairs because it's a single story right it speaks to the person that wants low maintenance this is the buyer i'm looking for for your home i recognize who the product you guys you're selling a product the product is the home itself, the good curb appeal, the ugly curb appeal, the pool, the no pool, the view, the no view, the bedroom downstairs, the loft upstairs. Are you, are you tracking with what I'm saying? You need to recognize who the buyer is and tell them that you get it and that you know exactly where to go find this buyer and start honing in your niche strategies for that buyer. And then you just keep pulling the ace it with MJ card, the ace card out of your sleeve and go, I'm only going to do this at the 30 day mark. I'm going to do that at the 45 day mark if it doesn't sell. So I don't have to do that unless it doesn't sell. I'll do my top things that I do no matter what, but I'm going after this buyer and I'll continue to pull out something different if needed, because I don't believe that I have to change the price. My million dollar listing, this million dollar listing that that we have, the price does not need to be adjusted by at all. It's a very unique and specific buyer that wants seven bedrooms and six car garage. Not everybody wants seven bedrooms in the six car garage, but the home is definitely worth the value. So there's no need to reduce it. But the way we've changed the strategy on the marketing is bringing buyers to see the house. And that's your job, right? So, okay, I think you, you guys are good. Love you all. Everybody who's watching, go get your buyer delivery system going, your marketing proposal. 
After two weeks, you better know what the next plan is. And on the fourth week, you better know what the next plan is and go start listing property. Knock doors, get on the phone, move. Five is alive and you need to have lots of inventory. Okay, get your marketing done. Have a good day. You got your oxygen boost. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. You're welcome.